Molly Moore. I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of... Uh, yeah. <laughs> First episode back and I messed it up already. <laughs> a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. Boom. Nailed it. First try. Welcome, everybody, to season two, episode... I think this is 27 total. It's episode one of season two, but I think we've done 27 episodes. Oh, that's insane. Uh, yeah. Mally, it's so good to be back. I'm ready. This is mm, this is going to be interesting. If you're new to our show, we take movies that have down endings, sad endings, or just straight up fucked up endings, and uh, we try to find the good in them. And what we're doing here is we're building a playlist, a playlist of movies that just, just qualify for that movie that just don't leave you feeling too good uh, when they're over. We'll, why are we doing this again, Mally? <laughs> Because they're good. Most, well, like, most like of the what time. Is, why do we like these movies so much? Because, dude, like, all right, what it is, like, real life never has, like, the perfect, you know, little nicely tied bow on top. There's always some, like, like every ending to a point in your life is always bittersweet. Like, uh, like my, like, for instance, right now, like, I'm transitioning, like, I'm moving from one place I've been for two years. Um, I literally move like in a day and a half so like i'm excited like it's awesome but like that two years of my life is now over which is kind of sad so a lot of these movies we do are you know sometimes massively depressing or have really fucked up endings but you know some of them have you know good ish endings but still are those bittersweet have those you know heavily bittersweet moments but like even you know there's like just like in real life just like in these movies there's a silver lining somewhere and that's what we're here to do, is find those. At least that's what we're trying to do here. I mean, as best as best as we can. Like, we're this is episode 27. We're still not very good at finding the silver lining sometimes. But hey, with practice makes perfect. I th- or at least an entertaining show. Uh, Yeah, that's one word for it. Mally, what's your relationship like with this movie? Okay, well, if you didn't see the title of the episode, we're doing Mother. Um... So I, I didn't really, I didn't even know this movie was coming out until I think I went to see the It remake mm-hmm. <clears throat> and like, I, like that tra like the trailer for this movie shows you absolutely nothing. Like I had no idea what it was about and like, I was like, okay, like it's Arnofsky, like I'm going to see this, whatever. Um, like me and a few friends went and saw it and like afterwards we went to the bar and like. We just kind of sat there in, like, this stunned silence for a few before, like, one of us was finally like, what the fuck did we just watch? Like, it was, I don't know, like, I was, I loved every minute of it, but I was so taken back because I just didn't, I had no, like, idea what I was getting into. And it was rad as hell, but insane at the same time. Yeah, I wish I saw this one uh, in the theaters, or at least with a crowd. I managed to see this one at home um, and kind of had the whole, uh, I guess, the meaning behind the film uh, ruined for me. Well, not really ruined, but someone kind of like dropped a hint uh, about what this movie is really about. Oh, the uh, <coughs> twist that people keep calling, which is not even a twist, but we'll we'll talk about that when we get into the film. The first time I saw, I saw Mother... Um, I, I really enjoyed it. It was super tense, even though I kind of could tell what was going to happen. Right, right. Uh, after every scene. But I found on, again on the second rewatch, it's still, that third act still holds up. And even though I know what's coming, it's just, it's so, it's so gripping. Like, like in, like anticipation of what you know is coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I don't think it's a movie that lends itself to like rewatch upon rewatch upon rewatch. And unless you're watching it with someone that hasn't seen it, because I did whenever I rewatched it for this, I watched it with someone that had no idea what it was. So like I spent most of the time just watching their face and watching them react, which is so much fun. So the movie is Mother. The year is 2017, directed by Darren Aronofsky. And that, I think this makes the second of his films we've done. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, th- I think, wow, I didn't even think about this. Season one started with, with an Arnofsky film, Requiem. Yeah, and, and then, now wow. we're doing one for season two's first episode, so. Um, yeah, we did not plan that. Or did we? No, we're not smart enough to plan stuff like that. 
Maybe this should just be a tradition. We should just do Aronofsky movies at the beginning of uh, each season. Oh, God. I mean, Maybe we he... should just do like Black Swan. Noah. Yeah, no, Black Swan. Let's not. I don't want to watch Noah again. Oh, my God. The Fountain. That might be a good one because The Fountain is the only Aronofsky film that I haven't seen. Oh, dude. Oh, The Fountain's so good. Anyway. We're not talking about The Fountain right now. We're talking about Mother. So the film stars Jennifer Lawrence, Javier Bardem, Ed Harris, Michelle Pfeiffer, Domhnall Gleeson, and Yovan Adepo? Wait, who is that? I don't know. Roger Ebert's uh, website lists him as the last person credited for the film, so I don't know. All right. Wait, they don't They don't list who plays uh, his his publicist. Who? God, what was her, what is her fucking name? Uh, oh. Uh, Chris, oh. Kristen Wiig. G- guys. Kristen Wiig is in this fucking movie, and she she does well. I I don't know why she's in this movie. I don't I don't think she needs to be in this movie. No, fuck it. She absolutely has to be in this. She is the fucking herald. We'll get to that. But guys, Kristen Wiig is in this fucking movie. Had a budget of thirty three million dollars. Um, only grossed forty four point five worldwide. Call it a win. Yeah, I mean, if you don't count like marketing and stuff, I don't. 69% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. What do you think about that, Mally? Yeah, I mean, it... it Like, for my, my personal Rotten Tomato score would definitely be much higher, but I definitely... I get the the 69%. And, of course, the dreaded F cinema score. I don't... I don't know about... I don't know about the F, though. That seems a little... Nah. Looking at this list of the other movies that have gotten the F cinema score, I don't think Mother Belongs on here. Like, I know it's a polarizing movie, but it, there's a lot... That can be talked about here. There's a lot of good in this. Oh, absolutely. Like I've I've been back and forth with many people on this movie, not because like I think they're wrong to not like it, just because I'm like I'm just so curious. It's like, well, why why didn't you like it? And I'm like, oh, and and they'll tell me like, oh, okay, like I respect that. Like like me like I loved it for these reasons. Like it's a great discussion movie. But I do I do see why people wouldn't like this movie. Um, I, I think once people realize while they're watching what it's about, it can get real frustrating. Oh, yeah. But I also think this movie is um, it's on the same level for movies for me, like uh, like Only God Forgives, like ones that are really polarizing and people either love them or they hate them. And, you know, I love that one. Like this is one of those ones where it's real hard to come down in the middle on. Oh, absolutely. We spend all our time here. I want to make a paradise. She redid all of that, every last detail. And she breathed life back into every room. Are you happy? I love you. Please, come in. Hello. Hello. He's a stranger. We're just gonna let him sleep in our house. Hello. Hello. Did you know he had a wife? (gasps) He has pictures of you in his luggage. What were you doing in their luggage? they want god help you they've come here to see me come quick you're insane you're insane all i'm trying to do is bring life into this house Open the door to new people, new ideas. I'm so sorry. Get out of my house! Get out! You give and you give and you give. It's just never enough. No! Okay, so the first note I got on this trailer is that the score it fucking rules. Okay, now, so, okay, you you heard about the whole background of the score for this movie? No, tell me. Uh, okay, so, 
for those of you, um, again, if you haven't seen this movie, why are you listening to this? We've been through this every episode. Anyway, um, so there is no thematic score, like cinematic score for this movie. It's, you don't notice it, like, because it's such a, like, it's so real. Like, you don't, like, you know, real life doesn't have theme music. Well, unless you're me, who constantly has headphones in. Um, so, I, and I'm going to pronounce this guy's name wrong. So, Johan Johansson, mm-hmm. I think. Rest in peace, um, by the way. Yeah, R.I.P. Um, fantastic composer. Mm-hmm. Um, he he was like Villeneuve's like go to guy. Did Sicario, Arrival, Prisoners, Blade Runner, um, twenty forty nine, Theory of Everything. He worked like he apparently scored like spent like a year scoring this movie almost. And then after like him and Arnofsky watched it, he literally like apparently like supposedly looked over and was like, honestly, delete everything and use the silence instead. Yeah, I agree. Too. Like. That's fucking genius and ve- and selfless. Like yeah. that's it takes a lot for a composer to be like, don't use my music. Mm-hmm. But I've wondered, like, ever since I watched that trailer, is that the score that we didn't hear? I don't like, know, but I really like it. It like it works really well in that trailer. Like it's it kind of reminds me a little bit of the score for There Will Be Blood that Johnny Greenwood did. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've like I've always wondered if that is part of the unheard score. And if that, I, I wonder if that will, like the score he did will ever get released. Cause I would love to hear that. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about the visuals. I think this trailer is just vague enough to not give away any direct clues as to what the actual plot's about. Right. Like you get the general idea, like, you know, this couple has a house, the guy invites random people to live with them. Chaos erupts. But like that's like that's that's not the movie. At yeah, all. that's very surface level stuff. Oh, um, absolutely. I think the 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 mislead on this movie is also great because going by the billboard um, and the artwork and the, this trailer in particular, it's it's so wanting people to believe it's a Rosemary's Baby influenced uh, like remake, and it's it's anything but. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean that poster of like that it's like that super wide of the house with her like face superimposed. It's basically the is, Rosemary's it's Baby. It's literally poster. the Rosemary's Baby poster. And I, for some reason I'm obsessed with the font they used for like the title card and stuff. Yeah, it, it's like, it's, it's kind of old school. I love it. It's it's definitely like early 2000s for me. Really? That's what, man, that's what that makes you think of? Yeah, because it makes me think of like the grind, quarry, punk kind of fonts that were okay, very popular in the early 2000s. I can see that. I can see that. I'll give you that one. Um, Mally, anything else you want to talk about before we get into discussing the film properly? Uh, No, let's, let's get into the f- fucking movie because I'm ready. All right, so I think in order to understand this movie, we should break down exactly who's who... And what the stakes are and what we're talking about. So Okay. Well, first off, this movie is fucking wild. <laughs> that's just that's I just I gotta put that out there like at the very beginning. Like this it is a white knuckle thrill ride. Is like, it? Um y- fucking yes. Well, let's let's talk well, about okay. that. I think the last thirty the minutes. The last thirty minutes, absolutely. But I dude, I mean, the first and second act, like you get some good tension building. You do, and in fact, the whole reason this movie has the exclamation point on the end, as Aronofsky said, is uh the exclamation point is supposed to represent the third act of the movie and just how chaotic and crazy it is. And like well, and for like before we get into like the characters and the actual plot. I want to talk like the cinematography in this is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, all sixteen the, millimeter too. All sixteen millimeter film because of course it was, um, <laughs> and it's also like every single like I don't think there was a single shot where the camera was locked down. Like it's everything's handheld. Like it's not. I don't even think it doesn't even look like steady cam to me. It looks all handheld. Like the camera is constantly moving, mm-hmm. and it's so like, it just make like. You never get, like, even when it's just, like, you know, Jennifer Lawrence's character, you know, painting a wall, which happens a number of times, um, like, the camera's not settled down, like, and it's so uncomfortable. Yeah. And for me, for me personally, like, I feel, and, like, it's not, like, the movie's not shot as a POV, like, a classic POV, but, like, we're, you know, we're seeing everything through 
you know, Jennifer Lawrence's character. So it mm-hmm. almost it, like it feels like a POV, but it's not really. But also like because of that, there aren't very many wide shots. Everything's super tight and close up. And like I'm very claustrophobic and this movie like fucked with me the entire time. I do I do like the cinematography a lot, but I think the the real star of this film is the editor cuz Jesus Christ, I can only imagine the the last the third act alone must have been like a nightmare to edit. Just I mean, I'm I'm sure like Arnofsky had the entire thing storyboarded because he's kind of a psychopath. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, like the editing in this is insane. It's it's just like you said, it's claustrophobic. It 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 lingers exactly when it needs to. It ramps it up exactly when it needs to. It's just I I feel like. This might be a controversial statement, but I feel like this is like this new age of art house films, like on the same level as like Blade Runner 2049 in terms of just the scope and just how big things are and yet how practical and simple they are. Like this is a fairly, sm- I would say a very a fairly small and simple screenplay. Well, I mean, dude, like the entire, literally the entire movie takes place inside the house. Like Mm -hmm. you never, like we never go, we go out onto the porch Mm -hmm. a very small amount of times. But other than that, we like the audience, like again, we stick with Jennifer Lawrence the entire movie. Like we never leave that. She never leaves the house and we never leave that house. So let's, let's talk about the the meaning of the film. Like what? There's tons of interpretations for this, but what is your go-to for what this movie is actually about? Um, how humans are treat the Earth like a piece of fucking garbage, right? So it's it's like a, a cautionary tale about the environment, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, have like heavy from the religious aspect, but yeah, I think I mean, I mean, Arnowski's come out and said Jennifer Lawrence plays Mother Nature. Mm-hmm. Like, and and Javier Javier Bardem is God, so yeah. Well, he he he's him. Mm-hmm. He's credited as him, but he's he capital, has came out and said Yeah, yeah. He's um, the only one with a capital letter in his name in the credits. So I think the three, or at least the two big allegories for this movie is it. Like I said, it's a it's a uh, a statement on you know global warming and Mother Nature in general. And how we're trashing the earth. There's also the second obvious one, which is the one that I was kind of spoiled by, is that it's basically just a retelling of the Bible. Oh, Um, yeah. Like everything, like Old Testament all the way up to Revelations. It's crazy. There's a few things with that that are on the nose, such as like um, the sink breaking representing the Great Flood. Yeah. Um, But then there are also little things that I I liked and appreciated was, um, you know, when when, uh, Ed Harris shows up as Adam, basically. Um, you know, he's sick at one point, he's puking in the toilet and right. Javier Bardem's comforting him. You can see that he's got like a wound on his side. Yeah. And like he kind of like Javier Bardem kind of puts his hand or, and it's right there on his rib cage. Yeah. To represent, you know, Eve being created from the, the rib of Adam. So I do like little touches like that, but yeah. I and think because it's like literally the next scene is when his wife shows up. I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Yeah. And then their sons, Cain and Abel and Cain kills Abel. It's, it's very like. Once I realized what the movie was about, I was able to predict what was happening after every scene. Okay, now question: I I ask everyone this that has seen this. When did you figure it out? Like the well, that whole, was the like, thing. The someone, fact that it's a Bible. Yeah, like, yeah. Someone kind of told me, or oh, I read something okay. that it was basically saying it's a very, it's a very biblical allegory, and I I picked it up. Like I guess I had forgotten about it, but I picked it up right when. Uh, when uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's character showed up, because okay. I, I I watched this with my fiance, and I, tur- I turned to her right after their scenes and i was like i guarantee you the next scene is uh two two brothers show up and sure enough the two brothers showed yeah. up and i was like yeah he's about uh, Donald gleason's about to kill the other one and sure enough it happened so by yeah, the time I it got like- to uh the baby scene i was uh oh, i already God. knew it was well, happening <laughs> jesus um the baby scene um i feel like most people like like i've always been like like i'm not a religious person but religion fascinates me so like i I've read the Bible so many times. Mm-hmm. Uh, Revelations reads like a crackhead's fever dream. Mm-hmm. It's it, which is kind of how this movie ends. Anyway, oh, uh, like I, I honestly, the last thirty minutes of this movie, like everyone's like, oh, blah, like every, like you know, religious sex got all freaked out by, mm-hmm. it. and I'm like, no, nah, that's that's exactly how. Like, if y'all have read Revelations, that's it. Like, it's balls to the wall. Yeah, batshit insane. Uh, but think- anyway. 
I, I think, think um, I f- oh, apparently what? we both think something. So what do you think? Um, no, I was just saying, I feel like, so like I kind of picked up on like a few, like a little like religious references towards the beginning, which I didn't think much of. Cause like Arnowski like, he was raised Catholic. Like, I mean, the motherfucker made Noah for crying out loud. Mm-hmm. So like, I didn't think much of it. I was like, yeah, he always does that kind of stuff. And then it was the Ed Harris scene with the wound on his ribs. I was like, wait, hold on. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, Michelle Pfeiffer shows up. I was like, wait, a whole, oh, shit. Yeah. And yeah, that's when it all clicked was right there. And I feel like it's a, it's either that or the two brothers showing up and mm-hmm. one brother killing the other, I think, is when it really drives it home and everyone kind of figures it out. But I don't think anyone ever expects the last 30 minutes of this movie. Well, what I was going to say, too, is, you know, there's the environmental issues, there's the retelling of the Bible, but I think something that I noticed on this rewatch, um, I think this is also an allegory of, like, what the creative process is like from an outsider's perspective. So, basically, being in a relationship with an artist when you're not an artist yourself. Uh, okay, um, I can or see at least that. It, it, I mean, it definitely does, like, have that kind of, like, little, like, meta thing going on. Because I, sure. will, I will say... I'm currently in a relationship with someone who's also an artist, but not in the same field as I am. And I can see sometimes it wanes on her when I'm at work all day or when I'm on my free time, I'm editing or writing sure. or something. And I can see maybe like the the physical representations and the emotional representations that this movie shows. Like it's, of course, exaggerated for, for theatric sake, but I can definitely see this is where like the roots of... um. I don't want to say resentment because that's not the right word, but definitely like how those relate those specific relationships, like relationships with artists can easily fracture and can easily turn into a nightmare for the other party. If um, your characters like Javier Bardem and uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Mally. Hey, man. So this is a secret part of the podcast. This is where. We give our listeners a contest code where they can win a free Blu-ray. Oh, is that what we're doing? Yeah, right in the middle of the episode. That's editing oh, trickery. Yeah. All right. So. Cool. If you would like to win a free Blu-ray, it's real simple. We're going to give you a code right now. You're going to go on reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. You'll find the official discussion thread for Mother this week's episode. And in the comments section, you'll leave us this comment. The poet says to share. Real simple. Ties it in with the movie. Go leave that as a comment. We'll randomly pick someone uh, next week. We'll announce who the winner is, and we'll get in touch with you to give away a free Blu-ray. That's simple. So secretive and so fun. Absolutely. It's like like we're speaking another language. (laughs) And only true listeners will hear this part. True story. So thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, speaking of him, he is a fucking asshole in this movie. I, I was going to ask you, do you think he is an actual asshole or he's just so self-absorbed well, okay. is not the right word, but I, no, I, I just think he's so like, he's like, it's like Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen. He's so disconnected from yeah. reality. From I human like. emotions. Yeah. Yeah. Which to everyone else like Jennifer Lawrence in this case, he just comes off as a fucking asshole. Um, so there, there's, there's easy, um, connections you can make to this. Javier Bardem is God. Jennifer Lawrence is mother nature. The house represents earth. Um, it's so obvious. I don't know why I didn't pick it up this, the second, well, the, the first or the second time, but the diamond, uh, is the apple in the garden of Eden, right? Or the forbidden oh, yeah. fruit. The forbidden fruit. Yeah, the, the forbidden fruit. Yeah, I don't know much. why, but on the second rewatch, I was thinking, is this does this diamond represent something else? Because I feel like, at least for me, it represented um, God's just omnipotent power. Just um, what makes the the uh, Anglo Christian, you know, Old Testament God a god? Like what what gives him his power? And I feel like that could also be a representation uh, in this movie. At least how I see uh, Ed Harris and Michelle Pfeiffer's character wanting to touch it and wanting to, to hold it. That's um, interesting. 
because humans always want to be more powerful than we are. Um, oh, of course. Also, did you notice? Uh, I didn't notice this either until the second rewatch. But after they touch the apple, um, the uh, Jennifer Lawrence's character and they break it. Jennifer Lawrence's character notices them having sex in one room. And then the next time she sees them, they're covered up. And uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's bra kind of represents like leaves. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. And I noticed that they're, they're feeling guilt and shame, like how uh, Adam and Eve did after they. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, that was I'm a nice su- little touch. Like su- it's that little, it's that subtle little stuff that's awesome. I'm surprised there was no mention or like nod to like the serpent or something as as on the nose as some of the stuff is. Um, or at least I, I don't didn't know. See I feel it. like I feel like that might have been like too much, though. Maybe that's where the the biblical allegory kind of breaks apart. Where it's not Aronofsky retelling the Bible; he's basically saying, "No, humans don't need a devil to be lord into sin or to act like assholes. Maybe it's just in our nature to be self destructive and to take advantage and not." Well, I mean, to take going off give. that, you could say that human nature is. The devil, mm-hmm. which I mean, that's a whole other deep conversation. Yeah, yeah, but um, whatever. <laughs> the yellow dye in the drink. What did you make of it? Because I have an that, answer. Okay, that's the one thing I've been back and forth on, and I don't know. I haven't really settled on what that. Like, I've read so many. Like, after rewatching it again, I was like, wait, what the? F- okay, hang on. Like, and I, you know, I Googled it. I looked up, like, there's so many different theories on that. Like, what, like, what was your most Well, I'm pretty sure, one? I'm pretty sure what I got is applicable. Um, so she drinks the yellow dye when uh, Adam and Eve show up. She drinks again, I believe, uh, during the funeral or right before the funeral for Abel, the brother. Um, and I noticed after the sink breaks and she kicks everybody out the house, she dumps the drink, the dye down the drain because I guess she thinks right. she doesn't need it. So what I got from it is that that's um, evolution. That's adaptation. Mother Earth kind of adapting to humans. So she drinks when the humans show up because it's something new. So she's adapting. She's um, learning to deal to live with humans. And then she throws it away once – the flood comes and all the humans are gone. And then she doesn't have a way to adapt anymore once humans return. I like that. Yeah, like, I, I like that more than the, like, the biggest one I found was that it represents her faith in him. Mm. Which, I mean, I, I could see it, but I don't know. I felt like, I feel like that's a little weak. Like, what you just talked about, like, I think that's a lot stronger. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I, like, it, it, I like that a lot more. It fits the mold of the film a little better. For so sure. Do you think the the heart of the house is Mother Nature's literal heart? Like, because I think I'm guessing that's what the movie's trying to tell me. Because once the uh, the baby dies at the end, the how the heart just turns black. Yeah, I mean, I feel like I mean, I feel like that one's pretty straightforward. At least to me, that's what that's how I always looked into it. Okay, I, I just didn't know if there was maybe anything else deeper there. <laughs> Um, what do you, um, what do you, um, take the repainting yeah. of the house to be, to represent? Oh, like how kind of like at the beginning, she's like, uh, not, re- I guess, renovating the house. Yeah. She's like picking out colors to repaint. Do you make anything of that? Cause I, that's, that's I mean, one I'm thing I couldn't sure figure out. I'm pretty sure that's just, you know, that's the creation of the earth itself. Okay. I guess that makes sense. You know, started from nothing, and you know they build this. They you know craft this grand paradise. See, I feel and like then, I feel like if that's what they were going for, maybe instead of repainting the house, she could have had like uh, like house plants to represent like nature and fertility and and uh, biology. Yeah, but I think that might have taken away from the whole like the house is Earth itself. Possibly, so I feel yeah, like yeah. She, she needed to be working on the actual house. Um. So, something I know. One of the notes I wrote down while on this rewatch is, um, there's so much guilt in this movie. Um, I feel like every character expresses in their own way just how much guilt they have weighing on them. You know, mother is constantly being put into these positions where she's forced to feel something she doesn't want to feel. For example, right. for example, when Ada Harris asks her to speak at the funeral, or um, 
when she's having to escort the mom and her child to the bathroom who the kids urinated himself things like that there's just so much this this film weighs so heavy on itself that it's it made me start thinking how does this movie work from a story standpoint like if you strip away the allegory strip away the connections the references the representation what does this movie how does this movie work i don't i don't know if it does uh i'm kind of right there with you like i like i think like the like the fact that it's a kind of a retelling of like, you know, the Bible and whatnot. Like if you take that away and just go with the bare bones story, I really don't think it, you know, it doesn't have any legs to stand on. Like, like I tried, I tried building it up. Like it's, it's, you can't really have this narrative without having supernatural elements, uh, in the through line. Right. Um, especially with the, the, be the very first opening shot and then the, the, the ending scene, I, I don't know if it works on a narrative standpoint if you take away all the subtext. Um, I think that might be another reason why this movie gets so much hate. Mm-hmm. Um, because it relies so heavily on that kind of like religious. Yeah, that's that's why I say aspect. it's it's just a really expensive art house film. Um, I mean it. You could kind of you could almost say that about all of Aronofsky's films though, because I mean they all are like that for the most part. This right. one definitely, you know teeters that line a lot more than his previous stuff but i think all of his films are have always been you know they're big budget art films Mm -hmm. um speaking of um of backlash and uh people that don't like this movie i I got i got the list here of the other 18 films that have received the dreaded f cinema score do you want to hear what they are oh please all right so we got alone in the dark which is that uh video game adaptation from i think the early 2000s god i didn't see it i remember that that was that was rough um the box which i believe is that cameron diaz the the cameron diaz movie i'm guessing i honestly i don't have the years here i just have the, the titles uh i remember seeing that i don't remember anything about it all right probably wasn't good though got the horror movie bug which i never saw I don't even know what that is. Um, Darkness, don't know what that is. The Devil Inside, that's that one with the uh, the nun on the cover with the uh, oh, the inverted yeah, cross yeah, on her yeah. lip. That that earns the F. Yeah, I didn't like that. Uh, disaster movie, which is one of those epic movies and oh, date movies and things. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Doctor T and the Women, which I'm not familiar with, but I do know that I don't name. Know what that is? Um, I think it's a rom com. Um, okay. Eye of the Beholder, don't know that. Nope. Fear.com. I've heard of that. Never seen Wait, it. F- you said fear.com? Yeah, the horror movie. Oh, yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, it wasn't good. At first, I thought you said beer.com. And I was like, <laughs> that sounds awesome. Uh, I Know Who Killed Me, which is that Lindsay Lohan. Oh, Lynchian. my God. I never saw Have it. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Oh, it's... Holy shit. I heard it's terrible. Oh, my God. It's so bad. Um, In the cut... It's not even, it's not even fun to watch and make fun of. <laughs> In the cut, which I don't know what that is. Uh, this one might surprise you. Killing them softly. What the fuck? Yeah, never seen it, but I've heard good things. Um, okay. Um, I have. Mm, I got some words to have with some people. Um, Killing, Killing them softly fucking ruled. <laughs> the movie Lost Souls. Don't know what that is. Um, Lucky Numbers. Don't know what that is. Mother, of course. Uh, Silent House. That's that uh, real time horror movie with Elizabeth Olsen, which I didn't think was that bad. I liked that. Like, was it? I mean, it wasn't great. But I only saw I it the one time. But yeah, uh, I I have it. This <laughs> drifting around my apartment, so, dude. All my stuff's in boxes. I don't know where anything is, but I have. I own that movie somewhere. Solaris. Don't know. Wait, what, Solaris. I've heard the name, but wait, I don't know what that is. Wait, I know. Hang on. Is that I a sci-fi that movie. movie? Yes, I think. All right. Um, previous, wait, I might. Be, I might be thinking of Sunset. Previous episode, The Wicker Man. Um, that's the Nick Cage one. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that, and no, uh, Wolf Creek. So it seems like a bunch of horror movies really earn this title. I I would give the Wicker Man. I wouldn't give it an F because of how just sheer entertainment value alone. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Um, God, does Mother belong on this list? I would. I mean, imme- almost immediately say no, right? I mean, I for me personally, absolutely not. The dude who put it on the list, absolutely, of course, probably. I mean, I guess it's it. It, we're in this age now where like Rotten Tomatoes is king and votes are king. And if a movie 
is poorly reviewed before it's even released. It just yeah. sways the public. Oh, like, absolutely. You can go the other way, too. Like Lady Bird, 100% best reviewed movie of all time, I think, on Rotten Tomatoes. And yeah. it, it didn't do much for me. So I can – it's – I guess putting a letter grade on things is is just weird to me. I mean, I get yeah. I I definitely like the percentage. The audience uh, score makes sense because it's it's visceral reactions, but a letter grade for, for sure. It's just I don't know. I don't get it. Um, I mean, just like I mean, this is a controversial movie for sure. Like the like one of my notes is literally just the neck snap, <laughs> like yeah. that. Like I remember watching that in theaters. That happened, and easily a quarter of the theater got up and walked out. Oh yeah, I mean like that, that, I've that like seen it's very that, polarizing. That was so surreal for me. Like I've like you know I've seen people walk out of movies, but like never in mass like that. Like it was insane. I kind of wish I had saw this movie in theaters. I'm I'm really upset I didn't. Oh dude, it was wild. Like just the look on people's faces, like when the lights lit up. Um, and like I said, like you know, for uh, for those of you who are paying attention, you know, Mother Nature gets pregnant. Mm -hmm. She has a baby. Mm -hmm. God takes the baby and gives it and presents it to his followers. The followers break its fucking neck. Yeah. Like a literally an infant newborn, like maybe like a few hours old and they break its fucking neck. Yeah. And that, scene and that is, snap um, is the loudest thing on the face of the planet. Yeah. That scene is why a lot of studios didn't want to touch this movie and Paramount decided to take oh, the risk. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it's but like. It's definitely a visceral scene. It's definitely gut wrenching. Um, but I guess well, it's like, you can see that, it coming, it, like once you realize what the movie's about. So that's why I don't get why. The, I guess maybe if you're watching just on a very casual, unplugging your brain and just watching for entertainment's sake, I can get why that scene would be uh, would be upsetting. Well, I don't think it's so much like if you pick up on the Bible thing, you're like, okay, that's Jesus. He's gonna die. Blah blah blah. It's just I think the way they do it, like. Because literally, like, you just hear this snap. Like, you see the baby. Like, the baby go, the fucking baby goes crowd surfing. Let's be yeah. honest. That's what happens. Yeah. And then you just hear this snap and just silence. Yeah. And Jennifer and, Lawrence's is performance oh, in this dude, scene is can we amazing. Talk about, like, I fucking hate Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> Jesus, okay. Like, I, She's like, literally I, your position on the artwork <laughs> for our show. I, I'm fully aware of that. That's beside the point. Like, well, it's just, I, I don't know. Like, I don't, okay. Fucking hate is a what, strong what, phrase. What, what, what I've just never movies, been a big fan of hers. What like, movies of hers great. do you hate? Um, just, literally just the X-Men movies. And I, okay. I, didn't li I didn't like her in American Hustle. Yeah, I didn't really like her in American Hustle either. I, did, um, I didn't see Joy. I loved her... I see. Uh, eh, see, I like her I, in. I like her in. Uh, done without it, and or with it, like I, I, I was kind of eh, on joy. See, I like her in Silver um, Linings I, playlist. I like her in this. I didn't. I don't love her in Silver Linings. I'm not gonna lie. Yes, I know it's our namesake. <laughs> anyway, um, what was her first movie? Um, Winter's God. Bone was that what it's called? Yes, I liked her in that. Never saw it. So when she got cast as Mystique in X Men, I was like, okay, like they got a good actress mm -hmm. and then i saw her as mystique at x-men i was like that was fucking garbage <laughs> okay her performance i i'm sorry michael fassbender as magneto was just the best casting of all time she gives um, a very low-key performance in this movie and i really enjoy it though dude she crushes it like i'm all also i fucking hated the hunger games movies oh yeah Ex yeah, except those for two. woody harrelson he rocked it yeah anyway. hate those two um, but it's Woody Harrelson, like he's gonna bring it. Um, but dude, no, she like I was flabbergasted by her in this. Like she she carried this movie, like crushed it. What do you take about um? What do you what do you take from uh, Michelle Pfeiffer's performance? Because I, I everyone's giving her the credit here in this film, and she she does really well. But I feel like there's not a whole lot to her character, so there's not. There's only one emotion you can pull from. Um, no, I agree. Like, there's not like her character is doesn't have a lot of depth or dimension, but she takes that little and you know runs with it mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, I think she kills it. I mean, you could say the same about 
I mean, besides, you know, Mother Nature and God, like Jennifer Lawrence and Javier Bardem, every other character in this movie is pretty one dimensional. Mm -hmm. But the actors they got for those roles take that, you know, one dimension and go full on with it. Like Dom Hall Gleason, for instance, his character's pretty, he's there, his character exists for one reason, to kill his brother. Yeah. And then you don't see him again until... uh... Fantastic. Yeah, until right before the funeral. Um, yeah. Something else I noticed on this rewatch, too, that I just wanted to mention, too. Um, this movie is also, I think, of course, an allegory for uh, environmental awareness. But there's also a nod here to uh, our ever-ending quest to find re- renewable energy and alternative uh, energy sources. The, the, right, the movie right. ends with her igniting the oil that's in the basement in the in the oil drum um and i i didn't i didn't even connect the two until like i said on this rewatch and i don't know just thought i'd mention it i I, i'm i am very smart for recognizing that (laughs) um okay mally i uh i don't really have much else to talk about this movie is there anything else you want to say um well oh actually i do want to talk like what was it? I think the first draft of this was written. What did it was it like four or five days or something? Yeah, I think he said that they had like five days. Like he had a fever dream, but it kind of writes itself, does it not? I mean, for the most part, I mean, yeah, it does. But I mean, I think I mean, I just think that's really cool. Um, do you think it's kind of weird how much they sexualized Mother Nature in this? I I kind of went back and forth on it. Um, like that. Re- I don't. I don't like. I didn't think about it like the first time I watched it. Um, and then on the rewatch. It, uh, that really stood out to me. Like I couldn't, I don't know why. Like it, it. I don't want to say it bothered me, but like I just couldn't not notice it on that rewatch. Like it was insane. Now that you mention, I do, I do, I do, uh, I do think so. But I don't, I don't know what Aronofsky's trying to say with that. Does he? Is he trying yeah, to say like, that I've, Mother Nature is 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 beautiful? But see, I don't, I don't know what his message is going to be. I see. Yeah, I was. That's why I wanted to ask you. I feel like there's something there, but I couldn't figure it out. Um. Yeah, I don't. Huh, I don't. I don't know. That's gonna, uh, really going to bother me. That's something um, for another episode, I guess. So at at the end of the movie, um, so it ends with kind of, you know, Jennifer Lawrence burns everything down. God finds her, pulls her heart out. It turns into a brand new crystal. He puts it on the little pedestal and the house reforms itself just like the opening scene. Yeah, just a cycle. And then a new mother wakes up in bed and echoes the, you know, because the movie starts with Jennifer Lawrence waking up in bed. And then the movie ends with a, no- a new mother waking up in bed. Yeah. Was, what, did Jennifer Lawrence play that character as well? No, like I don't like, think so. It kind of looks like, I, I think it's maybe just because I assumed it was her. Yeah, I, I feel like it looked like her to me, but it kind of like looks like her on the on the on the rewatch. Like I don't think so. Her face or something. I don't think so because there's also another woman at the very beginning of the movie, um, at the end of the previous cycle. That's that's not Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, okay, okay. So there's three mothers yeah, I, basically. Okay, I couldn't. I didn't know if they were all her, just with like prosthetics or makeup or something. Mm-hmm. No, okay. I don't. I don't think so. Interesting. Um, um, all right. One final thing. Yeah. Can we talk about all right? So I want to. I'm going back to Kristen Wiig because I'm still shook that she's in this movie. <laughs> so she's she shows up. She's you know because God is under the guy's kind of he's a writer or whatever. Yeah. Um, and she shows up with the big crowd of people. She's you know his publicist. Um, biblical context. She's the herald of the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first time we see her, she is you know welcoming or like congratulating him. The next time we see her is when shit has gone crazy and she has four people lined up in a room and fucking just executes them with a handgun. You know, that that raises a good question. I don't even know what the publicist, like what, what her character is supposed to represent. She's um, the herald. She's the herald of the apocalypse. Oh, OK, OK. Maybe the four yeah. the four people being executed are like the four horsemen. Maybe. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Um, I well, I think she is. I think as the herald, I think she's supposed to represent the four horsemen herself. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, like she, like she's all you know, Kristen Wiig, ha ha ha. And then five minutes later, she's popping motherfuckers in the head. <laughs> yeah, it's 
Guys, Kristen Wiig is in this fucking movie. Um, do you... And just capping motherfuckers. And then she blows up. (laughs) Are we led to believe that basically the the new poem that he writes is just uh, the New Testament? Or the Bible in general? I guess it would be the Old Testament. Uh, since um, the New Testament has the the death of Jesus, I don't know if it's specified if it's Old or New Testament, but no, I mean it's, I mean it's pretty clearly the Bible. Okay, I just I didn't know if that maybe um, there was something else there. Yeah, um, yeah, dude, that third act, like, because the third act of this movie is pretty much just the New Testament, mostly Revelations, and it's just like, like, just balls to the wall, crazy. Like, I can't even. It's so hard to like even describe what happens because it's. So much shit happens in so little time. Yeah. Like, you got, you know, Jennifer Lawrence is running through the house, Chris and Wiggs capping motherfuckers in the face, a, like, then a bomb goes off, and then a SWAT team runs in, there's, some, like, helicopters oh, there's, and tanks there's outside. Oh, there's representations of war, of slavery, I think of famine. Um, yeah, dude, like, it's, it's fucking insane. All right, uh, now... We got our work laid out for us, Mally. Uh, the whole point of the show, Silver Linings. You want me to go first or you want to you go ahead and drop what you got? I'm going to go first because okay. I'm going to lie. I honestly have no fucking clue. I got nothing. I'm I'm going for the most <laughs> obvious one I could. Okay. Um, I mean, the world gets to start anew, I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, that's, I mean, that's paper thin, though. Well, not really. I mean... Y- there are moments of happiness w- between Mother I mean, Nature are, and I mean, God. It's, there, it's definitely like I'm definitely going for the low hanging fruit because <laughs> it literally happens on screen. Well, I knew you were going to go for that, which is why I avoided going for for that silver lining. So I I always go for the easy ones. I've kind of got two. One's real weak, but okay. Uh, I, I, I so, give me the softball pitch first. Uh, the poet broke free from his writer's block. And he was able to write okay, something that's that not bad. That's not bad. That that basically gained him all the fame you could ever ask for. Okay. Um, and my second one's kind of more of a well, shit kind of <laughs> revelation. But <laughs> uh, mother wiped the plague that is human beings clean off the earth because we're we're parasites when it comes to nature. So she got to at least exact her revenge and just wipe us clean twice. With the Great Flood and with the Great Fire, I guess. Well, fuck, Dustin. Sorry. I, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a pessimist. So, let's, fl- let's flip that upside down. Let's talk about pick-me-up movies. Mally, movies people can watch after they've seen Mother and they're not feeling too great. What's a movie they can watch afterwards? Oh, I, I have a great one. Um, this, pers- this movie, personally, um, it really um, it dug deep for me. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, it just, it hit me emotionally, all the right beats, um, amazing cast, um, you're not going to poke holes in this film. Bruce Almighty. Oh, that's, that's a really good one. <laughs> that's a good one. I didn't even consider that aspect. I went for something totally out of left field. Interesting. Um, I'm going to say what the name is, and then I'll tell you. Okay. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> I, 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 sh- I reached here, dude. I went, I went with Ocean's 12. Which I, um, I think I've recommended what? an Ocean's movie before, too, as a pick-me-up. No, don't get me wrong. I fucking love the Ocean's trilogy. Here's um, why. Tw- 12 is slept on. A lot of people say 12 is their least favorite. Mm-hmm. I fucking love 12. He- I also really like French New Wave, though, and that's literally what <laughs> yeah. Ocean's 12 is. Yeah, yeah. But, all right, but, okay, usually our movies connect to the sad... Mine does. Like, you know, Bruce Almighty definitely, obviously, connects with Mother... R- walk me walk me through your process here. Okay. It's a reach, but it does connect, okay? That's fine. Ocean's 12 is the highest movie, right? Okay. I mean, they're, <laughs> they're trying to steal the Fabergé egg, right? Yeah. Okay. What if that egg was a diamond? <laughs> and what if Javier Jesus. Bardem was Ocean's 12 and Mother was the museum that the Fabergé egg was in? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, Justin. Well, he steals the, the diamond at the end. I thought it connected well. I Look, man, I didn't have much to go on here. I was going to go with, like, silver linings, but I was like, that's too obvious. I mean, um, I guess. <laughs> and doesn't really relate, except it also has uh, 
the Jennifer Lawrence in it. So there you go. I mean, cr- a credit where credits due. That's <laughs> I. I did not expect you to drop an oceans. I did not expect you to drop <laughs> oceans twelve into there. Holy shit! All right, everyone. So that is wow. 2017's Mother, directed by Darren Aronofsky. Mally, it's good to be back. Oh, dude, I'm psyched. This is, I miss doing this. This is fun. So thank you, everyone, for listening. Please, if you haven't already, please subscribe on iTunes. If you're listening somewhere else on Spotify, Google Play, YouTube, uh, or Stitcher, please subscribe and rate. Leave us some feedback, if you will. We greatly appreciate it. You can like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Silver Linings Playlist. And you can also join us for an official discussion of this episode on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings Playlist. There's no the on the yes. subreddit. You can subscribe on there. You can leave us uh, feedback on how we did. You can talk about the episode with other people. You can leave us a suggestion. A- anything you want to do on on our subreddit, go for it. Um, you can talk to you can talk to me and Dustin. You, I love Reddit. You can also enter. I spend way too much time on my <laughs> too, too much time on there. You can also enter to win a free Blu-ray by going on our subreddit right now and entering the contest code in the official discussion thread for Mother. Uh, which hopefully you got throughout the episode. So, mm-hmm. thank you for listening, everyone. Mally, You're listening closely. Do you want to give us a clue for what next week's episode is going to be? Oh yeah. Um. Um. I don't know. I feel like next for next week's film. I feel like you should be the one giving the clue on that one. Well, I will go ahead and say that the the pick me up alternative I was going to suggest for this week that wasn't Silver Linings playlist was uh is going to be a really good pick me up for next week's uh next week's film so my clue is going to be don't celebrate the wedding prematurely (laughs) okay also allergies that's all i got (laughs) all right mally nice you want to you want to call out you want to you want to do our sign off or you got anything else to say no i think i think we've i think we've said all we need to say about uh mother exclamation point mother mother so let's do an let's always, uh, let's give another oh, exclamation point. Sorry, <laughs> let's give another exclamation point. You ready? You ruined it. <laughs> and as always, Excelsior. Excelsior. Those are never gonna line up. I think that one did. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs>